I joined the military when I was 18. It wasn't always on my radar. Um, <clears throat> probably around the age of 16, once I kind of went through a metamorphosis of sorts um, from early teen years until later teen years. Started getting into sports and stuff and wanted to be challenged more and more. I knew by the time I was 16 that I wanted to join the military. I think that the most valuable thing that I got out of my time, not only in the military, but since it was all special ops times, is the people with whom I worked. Because you're only as good as that guy next to you. When you're in small units and you spend a lot of time in them, the relationship that you have with another guy, all at the risk of sounding kind of goofy, is almost at an intimate level. And you learn a trust beyond what you would learn in any other kind of relationship. Because you've seen this person and he's seen you at your absolute best and at your absolute worst. You lived in good conditions and in absolute horrible conditions together. So I think that's the one that I've learned most about and that um, the one that I miss. So I got started with T-Max Inc. in 2010. When I retired from the military, I got hired by a corporation to do what I'm doing now, but it was a corporation. They laid off everybody, all their full-time guys, and kept on their contractors. So instant sense of urgency to do something. So I generated T-Max uh, in 2010, and been, it's been full bore ever since. If the apocalypse happened right now, and I needed to choose a team of three. And this isn't because I'm trying to uh, favor or curry favor, but my wife would be one, no doubt about it. Only because we know each other very well and we work with one another very well. It's a relationship I wish on other people and not everybody could have that. Uh, the other two, uh, they have to remain nameless because they're still active duty. So I have a lot of shooting videos and I always try to incorporate something, uh, a physical event either prior to them or during the shooting event. The thing is fighting is fighting, whether we're fighting with our hands or fighting with a gun, there's always m movement and I like to say mobility equals survivability. Additionally, um, we cannot replicate the pressure of a gunfight on a flat range so we have to incorporate snippets of pressure to help us compartmentalize those certain aspects of pressure and getting the heart rate uh, escalated is a way to uh, do that. And the other thing I'm just trying to show folks is, you know, you gotta get out of the flat range mindset. Just because you have a gun you're shooting at a paper target stationary, doesn't mean you're gonna be a good uh, combat marksman. You know, because once again, fighting is fighting, there's going to be some kind of movement, movement whether it's moving from chunk of terrain to chunk of terrain, and that could be a vehicle to a vehicle or a building to a building, etc. So a, a, lar a huge portion of my lifestyle is uh, maintaining uh, physical fitness. Along with fitness comes diet, massive portion. This is huge when it comes to uh, fitness. Some people think there's some kind of magic elixir. It's like, bro, what does your diet consist of? Because I don't know what you're doing, but you're obviously doing something right. So I want, I want to know where, where the magic lies. Diet's pretty easy. As long as you're eating food, you could pretty much eat as much of it as you want. Food is meat and veg. Food doesn't come in a bag or a box. If it comes in a bag or a box, it's a product. When you go shopping in the grocery store, if you stay at the periphery of a grocery store, that's pretty much all you need. What else do you go into to the guts for? Olive oil, black pepper, coffee. That's it, that's what you need in the guts. Everything else is on the periphery, uh, on the periphery of the grocery store. Traveling presents uh, a little bit more of a challenge when it comes to diet but I've pretty much got it, got it down. Um, I hit a grocery store when I, when I hit my venue and I stock up on meat and veg, rotisserie chicken, uh, uh, stuff from the deli and uh, big veggie tray, stuff like that. I mean, it's pretty easy. I think we all have a go-to cheat food. And yes, I have go-to cheat foods as well. Um, and they're pretty much like everybody else's cheat food, pizza, burgers. So a lot of, there's a lot of folks who, when they watch either what I'm doing on Instagram or on YouTube, they, they consider me the pillar of health. I like to enjoy life. So along with it, because I have a good diet and, and I work out uh, daily, I allow myself to enjoy life because one, I like tobacco. 
So I dip and I smoke cigars. Number two, I like beer, but I like good beer. I'm a beer snob. Uh, I'm an IPA guy and strictly IPA guy. And I also like bourbon, but it's gotta be good bourbon. It's often that you're gonna see me drinking, but it's rare that you're gonna see me drunk. So I got into metal at an early age. Uh, I, when I was 14, I went to a yard sale and they had a stack of vinyls. Oh, this is in the 70s. Yes, I'm dating myself. But I found an album I never heard of this band. It was called Black Sabbath. And the album was Paranoid. And I bought it for a quarter. And I still have it in my house right now. And it still plays. I brought that home and played it nonstop. The funny thing is, is my parents told me, you know that genre of music is going to be dead in another five years. This is when I was 14 years old they told me that. But uh, that's, how, that's what got me into it, got me into the metal. I think we all have our top picks when it comes to music. Um, my, my top picks would be in the metal genre. And if I had to pick three, it'd be the, the originators, what I'm going to call the originators. It's always debatable, yes, I get it. But Judas Priest, when it comes to originators of metal. Next, only because I appreciate the guitar work and uh, the lyricist of Dave Mustaine is Megadeth. And I think I would have to culminate because uh, I just love everything that they are doing and they could do no wrong is Lamb of God. So I've been to uh, quite a few metal shows and it always seems like the, uh, the, the most recent one you've seen is better than the one before. I've seen a bunch of really good ones and I like to say that the measure of a band is not what they could do on a record, but how they perform live. You know, what they can do on stage. Do they sound just like it? And can they maybe even perform better live? The last metal show I saw, speaking of my favorite all time, Judas Priest, I just saw him last month up in Long Island and they delivered the goods. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna have to say that that was my, uh, Best metal show I've ever been to. So I think my one piece of fallback advice that I give to people when they're looking for self-development is to get off your ass, to, uh, to move. I'm not just talking about working out, I'm talking about not accepting mediocrity, to be productive and, and stop your entitled fucking whining, you know, and make something of yourself because all of us have opportunity. You know, opportunity isn't given to somebody. You need to take that. You need to take opportunity. And sometimes opportunity or ideas are born from an epiphany. And you cannot just brush that epiphany aside. You have to grab that epiphany and, and nurture it. You know, if there's a spark there, nurture that spark until it becomes an ember and then start putting kindling on that ember until it becomes a flame. And then once it's a flame, a lot of times it becomes self-sustaining but you need to jump in and, and do that. You can't be afraid of it. You know, if it's there, go ahead and take it. The pipeline is never filled enough. I think instead of culminating with a typical, get you some or get you blaze on, seeing that it's more apropos, we will culminate with a time to go ballistic.